to those of you who are watching this, uh, thank you. Hopefully you have come to enjoy some of the wonderful stories that this group of people has been telling. Wonderful if I do say so myself. Uh, it's also kind of fun that we have everyone sort of virtually in the same place together. So if you don't recognize all the faces, we have Clark in Dallas, Bianca in Puerto Rico, Cody is in LA, and then Ngazi, Noah, and Issa are all in New York. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm curious, we were kind of chatting a little bit before we officially started this, uh, but I'm curious for you guys, what is the most surprising thing that you've encountered as we're all adapting to this new world? Anybody want to lead off? And God, you have such a great smile. What's been really surprising or maybe what's been challenging for you? I think like the most challenging thing is obviously you want to cover these stories, right? For people and you don't want to add to people's stress because I do think that's a kind of a universal thing from talking to friends, family, other people that work in media. It's, we're all really stressed because no one's ever gone through this before. You know, there's no blueprint. Like we're used to, if we've covered like natural disasters, right? You know, hurricane coverage, you know, it's all hands on deck. You, you know that it's going to end at a certain point and then you cover the aftermath and that's terrible too. But with this, it's like, you have no idea when it's going to end. You have no idea what the aftermath is gonna be. So you have no blueprint to follow. And I think that's what's made everyone so anxious about it, especially in the media too, because you're out there covering these stories, you're not turning off either, um, and not knowing what's gonna come next while also trying to deliver that news to other people is what's, what's made it, I don't know, it's, it's made it just a very difficult thing to cover, to be honest. Have the rest of you guys kind of had the same experience or anyone had a different experience? I'll add to that. Um, I think something that I've definitely thought about a lot in these last couple of weeks, and I know that my journalist friends um, at other media companies have as well, is, you know, we sometimes forget, or at least I do, that our job really is a public service. And, um, you know, we are on the front lines, you know, not uh, you know, risking our lives as much as obviously healthcare workers and other workers who are taking care of patients right now. But our job and what we do is a public service um, because it's important for people to be informed. And as a journalist, um, something that's surprising or a new challenge, I guess, is um, balancing your health and um, the health of your family with our duty as journalists. Um, I think that that's something that isn't always necessarily top of mind. Um, since we do cover all sorts of different stories, they're not always as intense as what we're covering now. But more now than ever in this global pandemic, we are forced to remember that this is our job and that we have to keep pushing through and doing what we're doing because it's important at a time like this. Yeah, and I'll add to that too. In my case, I think what really struck me is that for the first time, I feel like I'm really in the center of it all. Like we're all affected by it in the same way. Puerto Rico was the first one in the U.S. to put in place such a strict lockdown. So on the one hand, I'm exempt because I'm a member of, of the media. On the other hand, I have in mind, I don't want to expose myself because that means exposing my family. So it's been a challenge to balance those two things because I think in the past, we cover fires and we cover shootings, but we always feel that sort of distance. Now we're sort of in the middle of it. So it, it does feel like that public service, we need to continue to move on and give this critical information at the same time that we know it's also our responsibility to keep ourselves safe, to keep everyone else safe. I know as we're all working on a story, we kind of have tunnel vision sometimes. It's just, you know, sort of like tell the story that we're focused on. Um, but then it's been nice in a couple of moments to kind of step back and like watch some of the things that, that we're all collectively doing. Um, Clark, I'm wondering if there's a story that you've seen from the team that maybe surprised you or you just thought like, hey, this is a fantastic story. I'm glad we did this. Yeah, I was actually loved Ngozi's story at the last mass. And I think it was in Brooklyn, right, Ngozi? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that this kind of off of what Bianca was saying too, like everyone is affected by this. And it's one of the first times I know in my life where like you could say that like globally that there's not a, a person who's not affected because if they don't have the virus, they're trying to not get the virus or infect the people they live with or their spouse or kids or, you know, whatever. And so I think what's happened is that a lot of people are asking like really kind of philosophical, deep questions. And I loved that church service because it kind of got to this core question of like, 
why is this happening? And last night on Zoom, just like this, I was um, hanging out with my Bible study small group. And that was kind of the like consensus question of the whole meeting was just like, what is God doing? And what can we learn from this as a, as a people um, when it feels really out of control, but like most things in life, like everything has a purpose and a reason. And so, you know, what do you, what do you make of that? But this like place of refuge was also victim to this virus. And so it really is like, you know, a, a place of like pretty raw desperation. And I think a place that everyone can relate to because they're all, we're all going through our own version of that. Cody, um, I, I, I really enjoyed your story about the cowgirl of Compton. Um, I'm curious how it felt to obviously have invested so much in that story and then to sort of share it at a time like this when everyone's minds are kind of at a different place. Is it, nice, is it like a nice break, you think, for us? Yeah, uh, to me, you know, um, it is a nice break. Um, we're getting hit in all different directions. Uh, sorry, my kids. Uh, we're getting hit in all different directions, uh, you know, by uh, just different news coming in and, and uh, uh, restrictions. And it was one of those things that I was able to go back and, and edit a little bit. And for us to be able to really release it at the time we did, I think it was perfect. It gave everyone, you know, the, the ability to escape for at least the 10 minutes of the, the length of the video to be able to put themselves in a different uh, world. And a lot of people don't really know too much about rodeo. So it was a perfect, uh, topic to be able to introduce to people uh, that uh, watch our content. No, I'm curious uh, for you, is, has there been a story that, that one of us um, has shared and you're like, man, I didn't even think about that. I mean, I think we're turning so much content right now. Each day, each one of you is, is turning stories. I mean, two or three stories a day. And as we ramp up this new network, this is the most we've turned out. Um, and, and it's so, so little of it is being planned. And almost everything I see us turning these days is really great. And at the end of the day, it's like coming down to the same fundamentals of storytelling. And as much as we, we treat this like it's different than it's ever has been, and personally, I'm sure it has been for all of us, the fundamentals of our storytelling are still the same. And the stories that everyone is telling is still awesome. And like for me personally, I, I'm surprised at how little has changed about my workflow. Yeah, we're not shooting stories in the same places or in the same ways, but like it still comes down to listening to people and telling their stories. And I think every one of us is doing an awesome job of that. Not just the seven of us who are here, but really the whole team of producers and managers and everybody's like paying really good attention to what people are saying right now and relaying that. Um, even at a time where there's so much disinformation, so many attacks on the media and all these other challenges we have to deal with when we're telling stories, it's also important to recognize, it's important to listen to those concerns and work those into our storytelling. And I think I've seen most of us doing that. Um, as, as we all try to figure out, okay, what is the next story that we should tell? Um, how are you finding that? Because there's such an overwhelming amount of information right now. I think I, think, I find people coming. I think like one thing I've really been thinking about, and I we've been doing this a lot in our stories, which I've appreciated is, like when I did the mass story, there was this idea of kind of like, you know, we have so many people bombarding us with information right now to keep us safe, right? Like we have governors, we have like political figures telling us things that we need to do to stay safe. And I, I felt like what was kind of missing from a lot of this coverage was how everybody was feeling and these things that seem ordinary, everyday things like going to church or even going to class. If you're a college student, that being upended, it was sort of like, okay, I understand this politician telling me I shouldn't do this, but like, am I the only one feeling this way about this thing suddenly being canceled? And so I was trying to approach stories from that perspective of, I didn't really want somebody just telling me like how to feel. I wanted to see how other people were feeling about these things that maybe in your life seem like minuscule things that now suddenly like have so much significance now that they're gone. So I wanted to have stories from that perspective. And like, I really loved Cody's story that he did with the two college students that were having to leave suddenly because that's something that, you know, 
that's a big deal. You know, you might miss your graduation, your college senior. That's a huge deal at that moment in time. And I really appreciated hearing from those students that that, that big monumental moment in their life is suddenly gone. And I wanted to know how they felt. And that made me feel like weirdly a little bit better knowing that, okay, these are things that other people are caring about too. And Cody, your, your story about parenting during the coronavirus crisis was obviously one where you put a little bit of a personal perspective in the story. Um, how did you feel about doing that? Did it feel natural? Did it feel strange to be a little bit more open? Uh, to me, it felt you know natural. It's something that I know that I'm struggling with right now. Uh, the homeschool aspect is one thing that I've learned, and my wife is an absolute saint uh, for being able to, to handle both kids while I'm working off in, in the corner. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of questions that my kids have that I still, to this day, you know, even after doing the story that, that are being popped up that I don't know the answers to. So um, I think that that's what makes us and what we do uh, so unique is that we can be personal. Um, and that's what I like about everyone's work is that there is that personal aspect in a lot of people's stories. Jason, can you share your story in DC? see like the relatability did that was that like an kind of an overwhelming um like truth that you found as you were doing that just that like yeah. everyone was on the same page of just feeling a lot i i think uh what was actually the most difficult was just um being comfortable with being that vulnerable in sort of a public way um because i was having all these feelings and then I'm talking to different friends about it and it seems like they're sort of having some of the same feelings. Um, and so I just decided to kind of try different things and see what worked. And I realized that like, if I strike up a conversation with the cashier at the grocery store and ask them how they're doing and how they're coping with this, that it like brought me back to this little bit more like human moment where I'm like, oh, even though this is a stranger, like we're, we're in this together. Like everyone is probably, having a lot of these same struggles and same questions. Um, you know, and then when I was recording it, admittedly, like there were a couple of points when I started like choking up because I was just, I'm processing what I'm going through at the same time that I'm trying to communicate with people. Um, and so, I, you know, I felt like I had to like strike that balance between being real and authentic, but also not just <laughs> getting on camera and crying. Um, kind of kind of on that note, Bianca, I'm, I'm curious how you're viewing this in Puerto Rico where like, Gosh, that island has been through a hurricane, an earthquake, and now a pandemic. Yeah, so I've been communicating with the same community leaders that I kept in touch with through the hurricane and then through the earthquakes and just how they're dealing with all this. But interestingly enough, because they've had to organize through those mm -hmm. horrible disasters, it seems like they're sort of prepared in a way. Of course, this is something that we haven't seen before, completely different, but the fact that they strengthened those bonds and that communication with each other has really put them in a place where they could check in with their neighbors and know what's going on. Um, and also kind of take what the government says with a grain of salt and be critical of them and keep them accountable because they have been through all of this before. They have that sense of empowerment, of knowing how things have gone down in the past and how they need to be alert because they can't just trust them blindly. And it, it's nice that I feel like all of us have done a, a good job of like trying to pay attention to stories where people are just, you know, a single person is sort of making a difference with hand sanitizer in Dallas, with a pizza mm -hmm. place in New York. Um, does it does it make you guys, you know, Issa, Clark, like, do you feel just a little bit better after you can kind of like hold up a single person and say like, this isn't too big for us to make a difference? Yeah, I think it's really inspiring. And I mean, just going back to us also being human beings, you know, we're scrolling through our phones all day, seeing all of this negativity. And I mean, all of this very, very sad news, um, being able to step away and focus, at least for me, on a story that involves someone that's taking this as an opportunity to um, give back where there's need is really 
helpful for my mental health. Um, and I think that sometimes, uh, back to like how we pick our stories, I think for me, um, finding those inspiring stories, at least one of them a week is really important because if you're doing, um, you know, if you get caught in that cycle of, uh, you know, just those numbers that are so horrifying, um, over and over again, it can really bog you down. Um, and I think that finding like for me, that pizza story, finding, um, those people, those heroes in this crisis is um, really helpful for the journalist as well. Before we wrap up, is there anything that um, any of you guys feel that we really like should be talking about right now? Because I feel like it's not often that we ever get sort of like a group of storytellers together in one forum. Like, is there something we need to share with one another or with our, our viewers? You know, I, I do have a question is, you know, what is everyone's escape? Uh, because, you know, I'm consuming a lot, just like you guys. And it can be overwhelming at times. So what are you guys doing to escape? Is it walks? Is it reading? You know, what is your outlet? Never been happier to have a dog <laughs> right now. <laughs> just cuddling with my dog, honestly. It's like, he doesn't know what's going on and he just makes me feel better. Like, it sounds so like simple, but it really, like, turning off screens and like cuddling with my dog has made me feel so happy during this time. I've been watching all of the Avengers movies. That really helps. <laughs> This is Glow, and all jokes aside, I think she's a little irritated that we're home all day because we definitely disrupted her nap schedule. Um, but uh, she actually is sort of soothing. Um, and as strange as it sounds, she has no idea that like everything feels like it's falling apart. And so there is this like normal rhythm with, uh, with that. I run, and as long as we're allowed to go out and do it in New York and keep distance from other people, it's a good reminder that the city is still there and all the businesses for the moment are still there. And one day when we can hopefully get over the hump, a lot of it will come back. And unlike other kind of disasters, which take a different kind of rebuilding, there's hope that this one will be a little easier in some ways. Yeah, I, I think you're right now. I've, I've had the same outlet. Um, and I had this like silly moment the other day where I like touched a branch and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have to hand sanitize because this is just a tree branch. <laughs> And it was like a really weird realization, but it also just made me smile and made me like remember that the world will will return eventually. You should still wash your hands, Chase. After touching, okay. <laughs> That's like it. Uh, no, but but thank you guys for taking time to chat today. It was really good for me just to to see your faces. I hope we do this again. Um, and for people who have joined us to watch the conversation, make sure you're following us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, so that. Um, we, uh, you can see the stories that we're, that we're telling. And also if you have ideas for something we should be talking about, a story we should be telling, be sure to uh, reach out to us on social media. Thanks everyone. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe everyone. Bye. Wash your hands. <laughs>